Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to you and a warm welcome to this, the third in our series of Doha debates. Now, those of you who've attended before know that we don't shy away from controversy here. On the contrary, we're looking for it, and tonight is no exception. The motion before us is that this House believes Iraq's neighbors do not wish to see a democratic Iraq. It's a proposition that takes us right into the heart of the deep divisions, the hatreds and conflicts being played out in the region, and, of course, it's in advance of Iraq's scheduled elections on January the 30th. Now, there have been plenty of fine statements about non-interference in Iraq's internal affairs and plenty of accusations about some pretty nasty and direct interference. So what is the truth and what is at stake? Well, our speakers tonight are no strangers to international intrigue, and some of them have encountered it at the highest levels. Speaking for the motion, Saddam Hussein's last ambassador to the United Nations, Mohammed al-Douri, we hope he's chosen tonight to... Iraq ambassador. <laughs> Iraq ambassador. Absolutely, Iraq ambassador. We hope you've chosen tonight to impart a few old secrets to us. Patrick Theros, former ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Qatar and president of the U.S. Qatar Business Council, a Republican by affiliation but no supporter of the invasion of Iraq. Against the motion, Claire Short, one of the best known and most outspoken British politicians who served until recently as Tony Blair's secretary for international development and resigned over the war in Iraq. And with her, Abdul Bari Atwan, editor of the London-based Al-Quds newspaper, a man who keeps his ear very much to the ground, so much so that he once got an interview with Osama bin Laden. That was in 1996 when Mr. Atwan was more famous than bin Laden himself. <laughs> Let me now call on Mohammed al-Douri to speak first in support of the motion. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thanks a lot, Tim. At the outset, I shall start with certain premises for the benefit of the discussion. First, the subject motion to be discussed today is hypothetical one. It is believed that Iraq, for the coming years, cannot have any form of democracy due to the fact that the country is under American and British occupation. Democracy and occupation cannot match together. Occupation means disappearance of independence, disappearance of sovereignty, and disappearance of freedom. Each one of these countries has its own specific reason to look very closely to the social, political, commercial development at the same time as they do have a common characters and interests. One, the majority of these countries are not democratic, so any real process of democratization in Iraq constitutes a source of weariness, not only for, the polit for their political future, but also for the ideologies and political regimes of some of these states. Second, democracy means strength. At least a part of these countries would like to have Iraq as a weak country. Three, a democratic Iraq means resolving in a better way the question of minorities. I am referring, of course, to the question of Kurds. Four, democratic Iraq means the liberation from all kind of fear and, and alienations. This would lead to real change, not only in mentality, but also in the behavior of the society. I would say there is no fear that Iraq will be in the near future a democratic country. It will stay under American domination for a while. At the same time, the American influence is a present in the whole region. That means the American will watch very closely the status of the balance of power in the area as far as there is oil interest. Thank you very much. Mr. Al-Douri, a week ago we had a statement from the foreign ministers of Jordan, Kuwait, Syria, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. They said the elections represent the only opportunity in sight along the path of democracy and freedom. Yeah, I know. I know that. I read it. You don't believe it? I don't believe it, of course. So do you believe then they have actively been working to subvert the chances of a democracy appearing in Iraq? I know you don't think they can happen. 
But have they been actively working against o the possibility? Op openly, openly not. They can do that because they, there's the pressure, American pressure on them. But I, I think with their themselves, I think yes. They don't want democracy. Unless there is a kind of change in their mentality, in their regime, in their political uh, regime. So if they don't want democracy, what do they want in Iraq? Civil war? Chaos? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't think so. They want a stable country, but not, not, uh, not democracy. Let me call now on Claire Short to speak against the motion, please. Thank you. I'm asking you all to oppose the motion that this House believes that Iraq's neighbours have no wish to see a democratic Iraq. And I stress it's the neighbours. It doesn't say the neighbouring states. It says the neighbours, the people living in the vicinity. I say how you vote matters because this argument that there is no commitment to, to democracy in this region is used by the United States, supported to our shame by my government, but without the support of most of the people of the United Kingdom, to support the attack on Iraq and the continuing occupation of Iraq. The claim is, as you all know, that the rush to war in Iraq was in order to liberate the people of Iraq, and the occupation is designed to liberate the people of Iraq and bring them to democracy. And this is the argument of the extremist group around President Bush, who try to pretend that the whole problem of the Middle East is that there's no commitment amongst the people of the Middle East to democracy and respect for human rights, and that that's all the cause of the problems of the region. As you know, I mean, you've heard this argument repeated time and time again. And my view is that this is an untrue and outrageous argument, and it's really important that people here don't give it any credence or any, any support. Um, as you all know, there is a lack of democracy and respect for human rights in the Arab world, but I believe it is because of the unresolved tension between Israel and Palestine so I ask you, and I repeat, to vote against this motion because what it implies is that the problem of this region is the people and the neighborhood of Iraq not supporting the principles of democracy and respect for human rights. And that is a deep untruth and a big insult to the people of the Arab world who I'm sure are yearning for democracy and freedom, but because of the complexity for the region that flows from the problems of Palestine and now the occupation of Iraq are being deprived of that right which belongs to all people. Thank you. So Claire Short, it's all down to the external world, it's all down to Britain and America that they don't have democracy in this region. The rulers of the region have to take responsibility for their own actions, but the external interventions have completely distorted the history of this region. Both the desire to control oil, I think by balkanizing the region, and the unquestioning support for Israeli policy in breach of international law, which I think is against the interests of everyone in the region and the people of Israel. But where do you, where do you see this commitment? much greater interest would be a peace. Where do you see this commitment to democracy in this region? I don't think that the region has had a chance to develop democratic government because of these interventions. Well, you've just seen democratic <coughs> elections in the Palestinian territories. You've just seen them choose a new president. Well, we've seen a limited form. You can't have full democracy under occupation when people are not free to move about their own territory. Well, the Palestinians are saying they had a free and fair election. If I may finish my sentence. So it's a limited form of democracy, but yes, I agree, the Palestinian people have chosen Abu Mazen as their leader, and I'm sure they're all hoping that he will be respected and able to negotiate a two-state settlement. And the neighboring governments, are they interested in seeing democracy in Iraq? They've said they are. They're backing the electoral process. Well, I'm not sure support for the elections that are about to take place in, in Iraq, I agree with my opponent here, is support for full democracy in Iraq. But I don't think these elections will be the flowering of a full democracy in Iraq, I'm afraid. Does that justify